We got a couple of pictures in from some people on the island that showed Derek in a horrific state. And he was actually the first dog to come into the little sanctuary that we built because what he desperately needed was some time off the streets. He really needed good food, shelter, medication. But what we quickly realized when we took him to the vet was that he was extremely sick. Hey, mister. Only medicines, your favorite medicines to go. So much so that one vet actually took the blood results and when the second vet was looking at the, the results on the piece of paper, she said, how is this dog still standing? How is this dog still alive? The blood results were just terrible. He was really hours away from death. Hey, you're not doing too great, are you? That's a bad, bad old case of love, mister. Let's hope we can do something for you, mister. His skin was just absolutely crawling with little animals. There was black pus coming out of him. He had a really bad smell of him. And generally, he just couldn't control his body temperature. And he, he was as close to death as it really gets. I didn't really think the first morning I came in to check on him, I didn't think he'd be alive. Your skin is just very bad, mister, isn't it? But you've made it through the night. Medicines are in you. The only good sign was that he was eating and he was drinking water, so he had the will to survive, but I think his chances of survival were, you know, really down at three to five percent in unscientific terms. He just looked and acted so badly in terms of his health. So I really didn't think he was gonna make it. During those first couple of weeks, all Derek did, with the exception of just getting up to go to the toilet and eat, was sleep. He was sleeping for 23 and a half hours a day. So even during any of those first weeks or months, kind of always thought it was just a case of giving a good end to his life. This was a street dog who just had the worst of everything. And it really felt like it was just, you know, let him die with a little bit of dignity. But as the months went on, and it really was months, his fur started to come back. He was able to eat more. He started venturing out for, you know, maybe 10 minutes at a time. But after a couple of months, I started having hope. One day he just turned around and he went on a little walk on his own. He went for a hundred yard walk and I was like, wow, this dog is, is gonna make it. His fur started coming back and that again was a very slow process. He's really the best boy. He's just such a like humble and kind dog. He doesn't need a lot of stuff. He doesn't need, you know, huge amounts of attention or play or anything like that. He's about 11 to 13 years old. He's at the end of his life, but he, he's now happy. He's got everything he wants. He's got love, he's got food, he's got his little shelter. And his little shelter is like his kingdom to him. He's just so proud of his little bed, his toys. He loves it. I've even taken him to the beach. He goes on little walks now. He started to interact with the other dogs as his energies come back. It's a lovely belly rub, isn't it, Mr. Garrick? Isn't it, Mr. Garrick? You love that. Look at your little leg going. Second nap of the day, Derek. Second nap of the day. That's a nice place, isn't it? To have a nap. That's a nice place to have a nap. We are best friends, Nick. Snoop is the best dog in front of the van. And Bradley. What a three, three distinguished gentlemen, aren't you? I think what he's taught me the most is, Derek, is just to really never give up. Some of us are, you know, down in the gutter or you're, you know, you can't catch a break. And De that was Derek. When my friend scooped him up, he, you know, he was done. When 99 other dogs or other people might have given up, Derek just stuck at it and grinded it out. And he got through those first few weeks and now he's enjoying every second of his life. When you see him bounding along with another dog and his lovely golden brown fur and a big, I think it's a smile on his face you can see. It's just the most wonderful thing to see. So Derek has taught me to never ever give up in life. He never had a thing in his life, never anything to call his own not even a water bowl or a bit of food. And now he's got those simple things. He's just, I, I'm not imagining it. Like he really does trot over to his, his little house like the proudest dog in the world. And finally in his life, he's found some people who care for him, some nice dog friends and has the simple necessities. He doesn't need anything more. And I think we could all learn a lot from, from Derek. I think, you know, the material things in life, the bigger houses or the fancy cars or the designer labels. And I think if you look at Derek, it's the simple things. Dogs can teach you many, many lessons, but with Derek, it's just to be humble, 
and to be grateful and to accept a wonderful chance like he's got with open paws and a big happy smile and his lovely golden brown fur coming back. He really is a very special boy and nobody, nobody deserves it more than him. Oh, Mr. Garrett, who would have ever thought you'd look this good? Who would have ever thought you'd look this good, mister? What a recovery. Golden brown tail wagon. Just incredible, mister. Just incredible.